Hello and welcome. This is Stop Drop and Mom podcast, a podcast where we talk about motherhood, community, and coffee. My name is Kaylin. I am the founder of Stop Drop and Mom, and today we have a very special guest by the name of Huda Fahmi. Hi, Huda. Hi. How are you, Kaylin? I'm good. How are you doing today? I am so glad to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me to be on your podcast. I'm really excited. Yay. She's the best, guys. She's like a famous author now. I'm so I'm so, so happy for her. So Huda, let me ask you, what is your cup of coffee? Um, okay, so I love coffee. And you know, we were talking about this earlier. I love, um, I, I, I used to just drink once a day and now I need it, I need it at least once in the morning and once at night. Um, and my husband just introduced me to this new blend called Snicker Nut Cookie. It's like a H-E-B brand, Houston blend, um, Snicker Nut Cookie, and it's, absolutely it's just amazing it's delicious i can't I'm, I'm up to like maybe three or four cups a day just because it's so yummy i know i know it's so and my uh, husband's like how do you drink like the, the, does that even keep you up anymore because i'll drink it at like 11 o'clock at night just because it's like dessert for me so i love coffee before it before that um before that one i was like donut shop um there's like the javalia coffee you know that really fancy coffee stuff that's for special occasions, I feel. <laughs> so expensive. So I don't want to like spoil myself. <laughs> Get addicted wow. to that stuff. But yeah, Snickernut Cookie is so far my favorite right now. I love you it. You will definitely have to shoot me a message yes. with like a picture of it because I yeah. have to try it now. So You're having it four times a day. I know. It's crazy. I need to stop, but it's so good. <laughs> or at least say, is that an addiction or? <laughs> it may... <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Well, awesome, Huda. Um, I just want to start off by first asking you, you know, a couple of questions about yourself so the viewers can get to know who you are, a little bit of a backstory. But first, can you give them your social handles? Yes. Um, um, so you can find my uh, uh, you can find me on social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram under the um, at Yes, I'm hot in this. Um, that's the just for all three. Uh, yes, I'm hot in this um, for Instagram. Facebook and Twitter. Perfect. So let's get into where are you from, Huda, originally? So uh, I was born in Detroit. And, uh, and uh, that's where I lived for a very long time. Uh, I, I kind of between like, Detroit, Ann Arbor, Dearborn, Flint, I was around Michigan, the state of Michigan. I, I we used to move like every two years, I used to joke and say that we were like a military family, because we would we never stayed in a place more than two years, and then um, and then we would just move, and then we finally moved to Dearborn, where we stayed for about twelve years before I got married um, and moved down to Houston. We even lived in like Fargo, North Dakota, for a couple years. I mean, it was like we traveled all over. Um, so, so when you ask me where I'm originally from, that's where I'm originally from. But um, ethnic wise, like ethnicity, if you mean if you meant that, because I don't know if you meant that or not, but if you did. Uh, like my parents are um, Syrian Egyptian, my mother's Syrian, my dad's Egyptian, um, both moved here when they were like 17, so 17, 18, so I'm like, or I'm um, sorry, my dad moved here when he was 17, but he got, he married my mom and brought her here when she was about 19, so, so they've been here longer than they've ever been in their respective countries of origin, so. Wow, that's awesome, a definite blend yeah. of ethnicities going on there, I love it. Um, a little bit of a melting pot, but what, so I heard you say that your husband brought you to Houston, right? Yes. I mean, I came down here uh, back in 2010 for a conference. Um, it was like a week long conference and um, that's where I met him. I did a whole uh, arc for my comics uh, about how we met a little exaggerated, but it was generally pretty much based on the truth. And um, I had seen him at the very, on the very first day of the convention or conference and I was like, oh my God, who is that guy? And <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't the type to actually like walk up to him and then just introduce myself. So I asked a friend of mine if she could ask her husband to like check him out for me. Is he okay? Is he a good guy? You know, is he a crazy, you know, I don't know anything. I just, he just looked cute. And I was, <laughs> and if he's at the conference then I know he's got like his priorities are, you know, to learn more about Islam and to be closer to God and stuff. So I was like, okay, we might, we seem to have some of the same interests, at least if he's here. So, you know, my friend came back with the goodies and, and then I didn't hear back for a whole week. I mean, we didn't tell him, Hey, do you want to marry this girl? That's not how it goes. Right. But it was, um, 
but I knew he was available and, and um, he seemed like a good guy, but nothing happened. And I was like, all right, I'm not here at this conference to hook up. I'm here just to like learn about the Dean and learn about right. my religion. And, you know, so on the very last day, this one Sheikh made like a surprise appearance and we all called him Dr. Love because he was known to like bring together couples. So I went up to him and I was like, it was like he was doing these one-on-one -on -one sessions. And, um, and so I went up to him and I was like, hey, I'm looking, you know, I'd, I'd like to like find somebody. And I didn't even mention my husband. I just, or that, that I'd seen him or anything. I just said, can I send you my like information? And if you see a person that you think might, you know, basically like a blind date set up, you know. So right. I was like, if you know anybody, can you please you know, let me know? And so the very next day, it was the last day, like everyone was packing up and leaving. And um, he brought me over. He's like, the sheikh I was like, come here, there's this guy. It's like, okay. He points over to Jihad, my husband. He's like, he's over there. And I was like, yes, yes. I, I was like, I didn't even let him finish. I'm, <laughs> he stopped and he looked at me he's like, one. he's like, uh, he's wearing a blue shirt. I know what he's wearing. <laughs> and I know what he's wearing. He's like, uh, he's like, calm down. <laughs> he's like telling me to calm down. <laughs> Cause like my smile is like, is this happening? Like if I could just get him to meet me once, that's it. He'll, he'll definitely, he'll, he's the one, I know it. I had nothing to base this on except pure, you know, I just, I just saw him and I thought he's the one. So weird. So you're good. Yeah. And then he, uh, he came to Michigan. We met several times. Uh, always with like a chaperone and uh yeah we agreed a few months later to like you know do the thing <laughs> and uh, yeah we got that was september was when we met and then we got married in january of the next year and then i moved to houston in april wow yeah. that is awesome and i guess for um some listeners who can't you know see that you're wearing a hijab, right? Oh, yeah. I think a chaperone. Like, what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, um, Hunda and I, actually, we are both Muslim. Yes. Um, so, I mean, my marriage story was a little bit different. I didn't have a chaperone because <laughs> I was a lot younger. And I actually wasn't Muslim at first when I met my husband. I had later converted years years later and it was on my own accord because at the time that I converted you know we weren't we weren't even really like talking on that level but um yeah so for you know for context uh Huda is Muslim so <laughs> if you hear like the word chaperone yeah or... and it's funny because like like not all Muslims even do it you know not all Muslims have like require that a chaperone be present it was just the way that my family happened to do it um you know they required it so I was like all right that's fine I don't care you know it cuts through the bowl very quickly you know right. you know if the guy is serious or not very quickly and, uh, and that's what I wanted that's what I was looking for so it worked for me well that is awesome I'm so happy for you they're so <laughs> cute together by the way everybody um she always makes fun of him in her comics <laughs> that I will list um, in the description of the YouTube video, just so everybody can hear, or well, hear about it, but obviously buy your book. I bought it, I love it. Yeah, I'm oh, so I don't, it. yeah, I don't think we actually said, but I did we say that at the beginning? Like I'm the author of the comic book, we didn't. Yeah, I, I told, and you asked me to introduce myself, and I totally like spazzed on that. I'm the, I, I, I'm the author, the illustrator of the comic book, Yes, I'm Hot in This, the Hilarious Truth About Life in a Hijab, and it basically is just a comic book that um, chronicles what it's like being a hijabi uh, living in America. So uh, a lot of my comics kind of um, revolve around uh, myself, my husband, my relationship with my husband, um, Muslims in the media, and uh, and and what it's like when you know people who are not Muslim you know come up to me and, and ask questions that are oftentimes inappropriate or downright just you know um, racist or mean or or prejudice or so that's what the book is about so so that's what i do i draw so if anytime you hear comics referencing comics that's what it is I, I draw comics so a lot of times they're about my husband who i do make fun of in the comics he seems like you know he still loves you right so that's well, all I, <laughs> I tell people i make fun of him in my comics because i can't make fun of him in real life he's like he is very hard to make fun of um in real life uh, he's like one of the smartest men i've ever met um and he's just he's funny um but 
I just don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't make fun of him in real life. So I like to just poke fun at him in the comics, um, which I think has made him, uh, I think it makes him, I mean, it makes him laugh. It makes him see what I wish I could, or not even what I wish I could say, what in a, in a different world, if I said it. You think it softens like. him up a bit? For the real world? I think it softens him up a bit for the real world, like. I think it lets him laugh at himself more. The okay. things that he might not have seen as funny, I see as funny. You know, so he he does it does it does it does make him laugh at himself more. Yeah, not take himself so seriously sometimes, which is never a thing either. You know, but when you, you know, and a lot of times I do things that are totally exaggerated. He would never do or never say. Like I, I just enjoy putting him in situations in the comics that he would never ever do in real life. Like uh, there's a comic where I have him put on a hijab to try to avoid buying cookies from the Girl Scout. Uh, <laughs> he would never do that. <laughs> he would never even think to do that, but I thought it'd be hilarious to put him in a hijab and just have him try to like blend in with the crowd so that he wouldn't, <laughs> he would, <laughs> I don't know. You are funny, Huda. Um, let's get into motherhood, right? So yeah. obviously um, your husband is to thank for your beautiful son. So let's talk about the transition from so you didn't really start, you know, being an author until after you had your son, correct? That's right. Okay, perfect. So once you had your son, um, how was the transition from, you know, just being from married life to having your son? And um, then we'll go ahead and get into motherhood and work-life balance. Yeah. Uh, so the transition between just being a wife and then, you know, we now have to, it really was, uh, it was almost like we had to relearn how to communicate with each other. Um, you know, the, the way that we had communicated in the past versus, you know, it was, we had, we had it down. We had been married five years before we um, had our son and we seemed to be, you know, going with the flow, everything was great. And then you have a, a, a child and all of a sudden, you know, mixed messages, um, cross signals, different priorities, you know, I don't want him to eat sugar. Oh, just a piece of cake is fine. You know, those kind of things. Um, so it, it, it definitely became, um, you know, it's not perfect. There's a lot of friction, and you have to, you have to, you have to admit it. Put all the cards out, put all the cards out on the table. Uh, acknowledge that there are, you know, communication issues, and we need to discuss them, and we need to figure out how we're going to get past them and work through them. So, so there was definitely a transition period. I mean, and we're still going through it because every phase that my son enters, it's almost like you have to <laughs> refigure what your, how you know, what the plan is, because um, it doesn't happen according to your plan. So definitely been a learning process and, and something that allows us to grow and know more about each other so so there's that and that's so important to realize that it is a learning process throughout you know the entire I won't say that motherhood is you know all trials because it's not but it definitely is a learning experience and I mm -hmm. I love that you pointed that out because I feel like sometimes we think you know we take parenting at a bird's eye view and then it's just like okay well Obviously, we have to parent, right? But then it's like, okay, well, are we learning different ways to adapt or be more, um, what's the word, like, be more understanding or compromise here when, you know, usually you wouldn't compromise, Yeah. At, you know, it, it's, it's a lot. But so it sounds like you have a handle on being a mom, right? To the best of your ability, he's alive. That so. there you go. <laughs> I just feel like he's always changing. I can't. The second I feel like I got it down, nope. He wakes up and he suddenly knows how to, you know, turn the television on and turn all the lights on in the house and open the door and try to walk out. I mean, it's just like every every day. I feel like I I the only thing I have a handle on is that every day is a different day. That's all I know that I can definitely say with certainty that I understand is that every day is different because every time I think I know what I'm doing, and he throws two. Down. Yes. For everybody. Okay. Yeah. Two and a half. Yeah. He'll be three in June. So. We found out. <laughs> I believe that our son's birthday is on the same exact day. <laughs> we thought that that's probably something we should have remembered. Yes. But... Well, now we'll never forget. We'll never forget. So, you know, whenever you want to join in on birthdays and not pay as much for one go. birthday, girl, there you, go. you never know. Okay? <laughs> I'm all down for saving money. Joint birthdays. I'm for it. 
Um, um, so let's get into work-life balance. Like I know you, you know, you briefly told us about your comics and writing and being an author, but let's talk about how, cause you know, a lot of us moms are entrepreneurs or we're working, you know, and there's this fine line between work and life. And, you know, sometimes it gets hard to where we're blurring them. Yeah. And I just personally, I want to see how you do it because I mean, you do it. And, and it's crazy because we're all doing it, right? We're all balancing yeah. or finding some way, but we're all doing it in different ways. So that's. Well, um, I, I started, I started this, I started my, uh, my, my writing and my, my illustrations uh, about two years ago, March of 2017. And he was still very young and, you know, taking a lot of naps. So it was very um, easy to kind of work during the day. And he does go to sleep uh, relatively early for the night. He he, ends, he sleeps at about six o'clock. So I have six to, you know, the rest of the night to kind of get some work done. Um, now that he's older and he doesn't, he doesn't really nap anymore and he requires so much attention. Like he, you know, and I, I feel like, you know, I, I'm obligated. I need to give him that attention. So before I try to hold on to that, let me try to get some work done during the day so that I'm not exhausted by the end of the day to get things done. Um, and I was, I realized I was neglecting him and it was a really difficult um, balance. I wasn't striking a balance. It was really hard. It was hard on him. It was hard on me. I was stressing out. I was anxious. Um, I was depressed. It was really causing um, a lot of issues. And so I, I realized, I mean, this was very recent realization that I need to completely make a different, I need to make a change or at least a stronger attempt at trying to balance um, what I'm doing for my own mental health, for his own health, because it's not fair to him either. So, um, so I decided to just not try to get things done during the day. Um, and just, you know, I had to, <coughs> excuse me, I had to like buckle down and be like, all right, when he goes to bed, I'm going to have to just work at night. Like that's, and for me, I'm, I have the luxury of being able to do that. I can, I can do the illustrations at night. I can, um, you know, work on, on interviews or whatever at night. Um, and, uh, it's exhausting. And a lot of times if you know, if you follow me, you'll notice that sometimes I'll go a couple of days without posting new content, but because I, I just happen to be taking like extra time for myself because I am exhausted. <laughs> so, uh, and then uh, what really truly helps with the, with trying to find that balance is having a, a supportive partner, somebody who um, can help me like for now, like right now, my husband is, is with my son um, taking him out so that I can, ha I can have the opportunity to do this podcast and, um, and, you know, sometimes he'll ask me, do you need a day? And he'll just take my son out for the whole day and I'll get a day to just kind of catch up on a lot of stuff. So that really, really helps to have somebody that's really supportive. Um, but it's tough. It's incredibly tough. Like I said, it, I was going through like mental breakdowns because I had so much work and and um, commissions and, and different things that were coming to me. And I was just like, how am I going to do this? And how am I going to give him the time that he deserves, you know, um, and it was just, it's, just, it's still too, it's very hard. I can't even, there's like no, I don't have a solution. It's just, it's something that I'm continuing to work on every day to try to strike that balance. So if you figure it out, Kay, please let me know if there is a way to strike <laughs> that balance. Girl, it literally is an ongoing process. But first and foremost, I want to say thank you for being honest because sometimes I feel like we as women feel like we have to take on everything. Oh, yeah. And then we're not honest with ourselves when we realize like, hey, this is kind of too much or hey, like I need help. And yeah. um, it's like, like you said, it's like, you know, realizing like, okay, well, my son or, you know, my daughter, we, we both have sons, but our sons, okay, we're not giving them enough attention or we're feeling like we're being, you know, we're, we are neglecting them. And then it, it's just like, it, it's that first step of, noticing and being honest with yourself but like I'm so happy for you that you're actually like you're making changes because that's hard like who yeah. wants to stay up you know all night long and I'm sure you're up all day long I don't know are you homeschooling or does he um not yet it's still to me it's still a little early like but we're we're kind of like we're doing like Montessori we have like different stations in the house where he can work on like um counting and I mean there's stations set up that we have for him to keep him engaged but he can only if I'm not standing with him to kind of watch him do it, he loses interest very quickly. Mm -hmm. But we're so we have things for him to do, but it's things that I, I I need to be there with him for him to do. And I'm not I'm not yet. Uh, I feel like I'm not ready myself personally to let him go to a daycare. Um, 
I, because I tried and I was just like going through emotional <laughs> withdrawal from him. So it was really tough. I found myself, I was just putting myself in this really hard place. Like I wanted him home, but I wasn't giving him the time that he needed either. So I needed to like make a change. And like you said, it's so hard. It's so much harder than, than I thought, um, than I thought it would be. And I really admire the women um, that, that do it and that can do it. And I, and I hope that I can be able to balance the way I see a lot of other mothers um, balance. Yeah, I, I struggled with the same thing. Like, no, I don't want him to leave. But he, I mean, he's in a Montessori right now. So that just shows you, I mean, not right now, literally right now. But yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, um, he's enrolled in one and he goes Monday through Friday. Fridays are half days. And then Monday through Thursday, he's there from, you know, between eight, like if between eight to 830 and then until uh, three to 330. So wow. praise God that that is available that uh, we pay obviously and it's yeah, not cheap expensive. So. I mean, there's no Montessori close by I well there well they they're all uh packed they they fill up very quickly there's like one or two and they fill up so quickly but they're expensive yeah, yeah that's another issue daycare is expensive girl you're telling oh. me it's just but then it's just like okay can I and this is, this is how I'm looking, like, this is how, you know, my husband and I looked at it, like, okay, we're losing this, not losing, right? But yeah, we're, yeah. we're investing exactly. this money into our son. I mean, you, it was a visible difference of when he was at home versus at, at school, like he's, his speech was developing faster. Wow. He was, you know, learning to be potty trained a lot earlier than a lot of people. And, you know, that's something we're still struggling with, but you know, hopefully, God willing. You're ahead of me. I'm not even trying. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until he's three and he can actually say the word. Mom, I need to go to the bathroom. All right, you're ready. I'm with you. Girl. <laughs> I'm with everybody with this attitude. Like diapers until you're three. Well, the school I'm... that he's attending right now, yeah. they're saying like, okay, he can't graduate to the next class unless he's potty trained. Oh, yikes. Well, good luck. Thanks. Definitely need that. But um, yeah, I mean, like you said, work-life balance is definitely something I feel like is a never-ending. I don't want to call it a battle because, you know, obviously it has its wins, but it's definitely a work in progress for me. And as I see you and I'm sure other, other mommies as well, do you have any tips on productivity? or how you feel like, well, we'll just get into productivity first and I'll ask you the other question after. Um, well, I think, you know, making a schedule, trying really hard to stick to it, but knowing that even if you don't stick to it, that you're not a failure, keeping that mind mentally that, okay, I can't, just because you couldn't keep to the schedule today doesn't mean you shouldn't try again tomorrow. Take advantage of any tiny bit, like for myself, a lot of my, you know, ideas for comics can come to me at any moment of the day. So I'll, I'll write them down in my notes on my phone. Anytime I have a few seconds even to myself, like if my son is, is busy eating or watching something, I'll be there, you know, trying to take advantage of the time that I have if he's not, if he's already engaged in something else. Um, honestly, for myself, it's hard to, to find the energy right now to be productive. Um, I try to follow those tips as well, but I have to tell myself like, like it's okay to take a break. <laughs> it's like the opposite of productivity. But um, I, I feel, oh, I feel a little overworked right now. Mm -hmm. and I, so I don't. I don't, I don't feel um, like. Oh, I'm sorry. What'd you say? Oh, I, I'm afraid of burning out. So I'm trying to right now take. I'm not. I'm trying like to take breaks. So I'm not being very productive right now. So I'm not like mentally in the right mind to give tips because I'm like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> No, but that's where I feel like, no, you're right, though. I feel like taking breaks is a part of productivity. There's, like, this whole, um, I forget what it is, but it's some type of learning thing where you work straight for 25 minutes and then you take a five-minute break and then you go in and work 25 minutes. It's it's called something. I'd have to look it Does up. Does it work? I feel like being, you said what? Does it work? Five minutes is so short. I know, but it's apparently it does. I mean, Alan does it. Okay. He likes it? Yeah. Well, 
I think, but I think that a part of being productive is knowing your limits. Like, I believe that when you know your limits and you, you know, you can take that step back and say, you know, like I said earlier, hey, I need a break. Hey, I'm realizing that this isn't working. Reevaluating everything. I feel like that is productivity still. And I, as we do, you know, more episodes and stuff, I, I definitely want to hear somebody that has like a mental health self-care type routine down because I'm so want to be like involved in in every part of that I, Sundays I've been trying to have like Sunday be my re my 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 like winding down day but yeah. like revamping up for Monday but yeah. taking care of myself planning yeah it's been working that's good you're reminding me taking a day like to kind of revamp you're reminding me my husband um in the very beginning when he, in, an, in his effort to kind of like get me to be more productive, he used to do these weekly sprints, he called them, where the very beginning of the week, we would write down our goals that we want to reach for the end of the week. And they could be very simple goals. Um, and he's like, for example, like, okay, draw three comics and come up with three more ideas for comics. You don't necessarily have to draw them. Uh, set up your or research, my Patreon or something. You know what I mean? Like he would just, he just bullet points for the week. And throughout the week, we would just kind of mark the done as they get done. But it was like a weekly sprint. And then on the next, the beginning of the next week, we would take a look at what we were able to get done. And then we would look at what we weren't able to get done. So he's like, you're making attainable goals for yourself for the week, not necessarily for the every day. So that you can try to like get you know, through. And it worked for a while. So it was really helpful. And then I kind of forgot about it. But it was, it was really helpful when I did do it. <laughs> but um, I think I started adding like a lot of stuff to the week like that I wanted to get done and it was starting to get overwhelming. And so I kind of sabotaged myself. I think that's another trick to productivity. Don't sabotage yourself and give yourself too much to do. Right. So that was definitely my bad. <laughs> right. So um, I guess, you know, to sort of wrap things up, do you feel like, do you, I mean, and obviously it's a priority, right? But are you feeling like, the work-life balance is something that you need to resolve within your life? Like, do you feel like you either, A, have you made it a priority before, or, you know, B, are you moving towards making it a, more of a priority? B, because I didn't think it was an issue before until it started to affect my mental health, truly. And then I, and it was not just affecting my mental health, it was, it was affecting our marriage. And so it was at that point that I was like, okay, I need to, work on the balance i need to figure out how i'm going to balance these two so that you know for my frame of mind for his frame of mind um for our son like it was um it was not a priority before so it's definitely becoming a priority very recently that i had to um really try to figure out okay how am i going to do this and it's something again like i said I'm, i don't have the answer i'm still working on it i'm still trying like like making sure that okay I've, if my entire day is going to be dedicated to my son i have to and then like between six and eight we eat dinner and, and binge something and then from eight to like 12, I'm working on comics. So it's not, it's not an everyday thing that I can do because it is, I'm working all day and then working at night, it's very tiring. So it might not be the ideal balance, but it's something that I'm gonna try and, and figure out what works and what doesn't and you know, come up with um, different ways to balance. But yeah, B, definitely trying to figure out how to, how to maintain that balance has become a priority. Very recently, it's become a very big priority to us. Yeah. And you made a good point, you know, with motherhood, and, and I mean, obviously not everybody who has partners, but for the mommies who do have partners, you know, motherhood somewhat affects, you know, a marriage as well if, you know, everything isn't planned out accordingly. So how do you feel that you maintain that part of your, your life, like your marriage with being, a, you know, with being a Yeah. Mother? Well, I think uh, being open and the, to me, it's always been about communication. That's always been our number one thing is not just making sure to communicate, but learning how to communicate. Everyone has a different style or you know, everyone communicates in a different way. Everyone receives, you know, uh, if I'm saying something to you, you might take it differently than the way that my husband might take it. Um, so it's, it's, it's figuring that out. And like I said, having children definitely did, um, you know, we have to learn again how to talk to each other. It was, it's very it's very um, surreal almost because we thought we'd figured out how to talk to each other. And so now it's like, 
<laughs> we used to know how to speak and now we get we're just like it just causes a lot of tension so we have to like figure that out again so um but but just talking and, and even just acknowledging hey this is an issue we need to figure out how to talk about this and uh and, and yeah, I mean, even that, like, you know, even if that means like seeing a counselor, even if that means like buying books about love languages, um, you know, and, and trying to understand how the other person, you know, uh, what the other person's love language is, I mean, you know, do what it takes to try to figure out how to communicate. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, the core of it is, is that we love and respect each other. And so, you know, yeah, we get into like, there's, there's tensions and arguments and stuff like that, but it's, it's it's taking the time to communicate and make sure that we understand each other and um, and I think I think because he's worth the time he's worth the time and I'm worth the time to to figure out how to understand each other now that we have a kid so I mean yeah there's nothing there's there's no shame in it there's no um, it's not it shouldn't be weird I said surreal but it shouldn't be it shouldn't feel weird because it's normal it's absolutely normal to all of a sudden you know, you have a kid, this whole new thing in your life. And now, you know, you've changed. It's not unusual to expect that of your partner to have changed as well. And you made so many good points today, Huda. I want to thank you so much for joining me on this podcast. You're always a joy to talk to. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Anytime. I, um, I, I love listening to to other mothers' perspectives on, you know, their lives and the same issues or same happy moments um you know i feel like within our community of mothers we all feel you know that a lot of the same things just maybe in different ways with different partners but and you know obviously different children but i i just want to thank you personally for opening up and being honest about your different struggles you know or or happy moments um they're all they're all a uh, learning <laughs> learning experience for me and the rest of the mommies who are listening. So thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kay. I really had a good time. It, it helps to talk about this kind of stuff too. <laughs> Yay. Well, I'll have to hopefully invite you when you have another book. Yes. Coming out. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> any, any hints or? Oh, working on some. Yeah, working on something. So, so hopefully, inshallah, when I have something more solid to give you, I'll let you know. We can have, well, hopefully, hopefully you'll invite me again. We can definitely talk about it, inshallah. That's awesome, Intel. So may you give them your at one more time, please? Yes. You can find my comics at Yes, I'm Hot in This. Uh, I also have a website um, at yes I'm, oh, it's yes, I'm Hot in This dot com. Again, my name is Huda Fahmi. And my book is Yes, I'm Hot in This, The Hilarious Truth About Life in a Hijab. Thank you, Huda. Once again, I'm Kaylin, the founder of Stop Drop and Mom. And I want to thank each and every mother or whoever who's listening to this for um, stopping by and hanging out with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.